On the one end of the failed TV pilot world, you've got Look Well, the smart, funny series from Conan O'Brien starring Adam West that sadly never made it to series. And on the other end, you've got Puchinski. Hmm. Just saying the name Puchinski screams or barks cancellation. It's a notorious 1990 TV pilot starring Peter Boyle as a detective killed in the line of duty whose soul is transferred into the body of a bulldog. It would have made a great double feature with Krishna Cop, except that was only a sketch on In Living Color. This was actually intended as a television series. It starts out seeming like a typical 80s, early 90s cop show. A sweet, jazzy soundtrack, the nighttime skyline, and yeah, this. <laughs> there isn't much recovery after seeing this title. Hey, who's this? I'm Casey, the new dispatcher. Casey? Anyone ever tell you you got a real sexy voice? Anyone tell you you have a stupid name, Puchinski? I like that this is his last name before he turns into the dog. I guess he's grateful that his last name wasn't Anal Sistberg. This is always a good sign, too, when your title character is credited last. <laughs> Written by Brian Levant? Well, now I know we're in good hands. This guy directed Problem Child 2, The Flintstones, Snow Dogs, and Are We There Yet? What, was Sean Levy unavailable? Speaking of directors, the pilot is directed by Will McKenzie, who gave us a few episodes of Scrubs, but 63 episodes of this. You just said okie dokie, Smokey! <gasps> That's my favorite catchphrase! Oh, that is neat -orific. <laughs> Puchinski is partnered up with yuppie detective Robert McKay, played by George Newbern, an actor with the amazing ability to never age in 20 plus years. Puchinski first meets the bulldog when he saves him from street kids. This is what I want to see in a half hour comedy series, animal cruelty. Luckily, he scares them off by being Peter Boyle and badass. What's it to you, Grandpa? Easy, fella. I lost my head, you know? When you get to be my age, you forget things, like, like whether or not this gun is loaded. Well, there's only one way to find out. Shit. I already used the Can't Shoot a Kid reference in the Beware Children to Play video. Well, here it is again. Can't shoot a kid, can you, fuck? Immediately, Puchinski hits it off with the bulldog, and, well, at least this is a sexier love scene than Mitchell. Seems like the dog is the only person in this show who likes Puchinski. Hey, Puchinski, finally found someone to kiss you? <laughs> hey, Shriver, don't let the word get around. I wouldn't want anyone to think I've been unfaithful to your wife. You know, so far, the show isn't terrible. I could get behind a gritty cop show with Peter Boyle and a bulldog. One of my favorite Dirty Harry movies was Sudden Impact, in which Harry pals around with a bulldog named Meathead. It was awesome. Shit, this show even has Frank McRae playing the captain, as he did in 48 Hours and Last Action Hero. That's a good sign for me. And yes, I really do like Last Action Hero. But then this show... well... He breaks wind constantly. The dog. Sergeant Pachinski. I guess to the show's credit, we don't see him farting all the time, but the fact that we have to hear about it secondhand somehow makes it more juvenile. Puchinski and McKay try to hit it off a little bit, but it doesn't work. Yeah, you want to see a picture of my latest? Nice, huh? You get to meet a lot of great broads when you work Vice. Yeah, it's really not that hard to pick up a prostitute, whether, whether or not you work on Vice. The two cops then witness an attempted robbery, and while McKay gives chase, Puchinski saves the dog's life, which causes Puchinski to get hit by the robber, then slammed into another car. And before they can send out for Hans Delbruck's brain, Puchinski's spirit floats into the dog. with the haunting Twin Peaks score. Am I going to see the dog go undercover at One-Eyed Jack's casino next? 
Here's where the story loses me, though. Puchinski saves the dog's life, thus causing Puchinski to get killed, but when his soul transfers to the dog's, the dog's former subconscious no longer exists, making Puchinski's sacrifice to save the dog's life completely unnecessary, because the dog himself is now technically dead anyway. It isn't until the funeral scene where we get to see the dog talk. And I don't know what I was expecting. Probably the look who's talking now, boy and his dog route, where you only hear the dog's voice while real animals do the acting. But I wasn't expecting this. I don't think anybody was. Ha! Surprise! That's terrifying, but at least this scene leads to one of the only highlights of this show. A 20-year-old weather bulletin. Yeah, try paying attention to the severe weather bulletin while this is going on on screen. <clears throat> Everybody loves somebody sometime. Everybody falls in love somehow. Kuchinski. You know, H.R. Puffin Stuff's dick would be less terrifying than this dog. He even starts to get sick when he finds out his partner has been desked. What are you going to do now? Well, first I'm going to try licking myself, and then I'm going to catch my killer, and you're going to help. Every revenge plot needs priorities. This one's is licking balls, apparently. Puchinski and McKay make it back to the police station where Puchinski returns to his old tricks. Great! Now he can molest women without them knowing about it. Perfect! I don't know what's more disturbing, the fact that he's fucking her, or the fact that she seems to be enjoying it. What's interesting is that because the dog can't walk and talk at the same time, McKay has to carry him around everywhere. They return to Seinfeld's apartment building, where McKay also lives, and I've never been happier in my life to see Huckleberry Hound. Look at yourself. You're a dog! I'm a cop! Need I remind you who caught the North Hill Strangler or the post office bomber? That's when you were making collars, not wearing one. I'm a better cop with four legs than you'll ever be with two. You don't even use your four legs. I'm guessing that even in a chase scene, McKay would also have to carry you. He kicks Puchinski out, but then he returns with the help of sexy Amy Yazbek, McKay's love interest. She decides to stay for dinner, and Puchinski tries to help set the mood with a little music. Everybody loves somebody Everybody Good work. That sets the mood about as well as Cannibal Holocaust. McKay fights with Puchinski in the bedroom, which really confuses Yazbek. Is everything okay in here? I'm fine, just training the dog. Okay, I'll go back to cooking dinner for the man yelling at something in the bedroom and brandishing a gun. But after all the terrifying puppetry, it just now starts to hit him that the plot line should probably depress him. What's the matter, Pachinski? Look at me. I've become a dog. It's all sinking in now. It's too late to get dramatic. You can't do ball-licking and piss jokes before the drama of your situation occurs to you. At least you haven't lost your sense of humor. That's because there was nothing to lose. Maybe stay home and arm wrestle? Now all these are good for is digging up bones. Well, you managed to work a radio. Not every dog can do that. Well, with only four minutes of the show left, might as well wrap up that whole avenge my death thing but not before a rabies joke. You're still upset about that rabies shot, aren't you? Luckily for them, the same bandit strikes at the same place in broad fucking daylight. I like how the dog doesn't seem too terribly enthused about catching the guy, almost like even the dog doesn't want to be in this show. While McKay fights Jim Jones, the dog, for lack of a better term, barks orders at McKay until finally biting the guy in the crotch. <laughs> So, case closed, end of show, but not without an extra touch of wackiness. Mmm, loafers, my favorite. Hey, hey, drop it. Drop it, drop Bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. Bad dog.
That's it, Pachinski! Wow, a shame this was only a pilot. There are so many unanswered questions. No, seriously, there are. Did Puchinski have any family members or anyone close to him who probably would like to know he's still alive? There were people at the funeral. I'm sure someone there would be interested in knowing he's in the body of a talking dog. He mentions a girlfriend a couple times, but we only see her in the picture. And speaking of pictures, at the end we see Puchinski being awarded after his killer's arrest. Does that mean the police force now know he's a talking dog? And if Puchinski's soul transferred to the body of the dog, did the dog's soul transfer? transfer into something else? Because as I see it, this dog died just so Puchinski could make piss jokes. Hey! So many questions that I really don't care about. The show's not funny. I'm not surprised that it didn't go to series, but I am kind of surprised that it even aired in the first place. But on the plus side, I guess it's not as depressing as Turner and Hooch. <laughs> Coming up next, Farrah Fawcett stars in the NBC miniseries based on the true story, Poor Little Rich Girl, The Barbara Hutton Story, only on NBC.